So I was going to live with Robert De Niro for six months and teach him some stuff, you know, so we could do this. And Hey guys, welcome to part two of my interview with Stephen K. Hayes. Make sure to check out the first part, by the way, linked in the description below, talking about how it all began, the real American ninja when he went to Japan to learn the secret arts of ninjutsu and all that cool stuff. But anyway, part two is basically when he came back to America, like what did he do? Well, he was almost involved in what I think is the greatest martial arts film never made. You got to hear the details about this thing, man. It would have really been something. And also he's going to share his involvement with what I didn't know, Enter the Ninja, Canon Films, ninja film that kind of started that whole ninja craze of movies back in the day. But anyway, Stephen Hayes had a, had a big part in that development. And then make sure to stay until the end because Stephen Hayes is going to share all this wisdom with us. So you're not going to want to miss that. So anyway, if you like this kind of video, please help support the channel. Hit the like button, subscribe, share the video. So you learned all the cool, like, I guess, mixed martial arts before there was ever mixed martial arts. So you learned all that. You came back to America. So what, what did you do? Did you open a ninja school or did you do something else? No, I... <laughs> I thought uh, I didn't want to run a school um, that would tie me down. I, I thought, you know, now this is 40 some years ago. I thought I was a good looking guy. I had a great voice. I had a martial art no one had ever seen before. Um, I had an acting background. I thought I'm going to be in the movies. Okay. So uh, we moved to Southern California, uh, my wife and I, and, uh, Oh my goodness, so many stories of almost, but nothing. And uh, oh gosh, they were gonna make a movie of uh, this novel by Eric von Lustbader called The Ninja. And uh, uh, so uh, I ended up at an interview as a, like a technical advisor um, with this movie and uh, oh gosh, you know, the director, Irving Kirshner, he directed... Uh, Empire oh, Strikes Back, I Empire think. Empire right? Strikes Back, yeah. Huge director, wow. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was really funny because he said to me, well, oh, he's in his little rocky chairs. Did you like the book? And I hated the book. Because <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't real. It was all, darn oh, God, you know, but I don't want this job. And he says, well, you know, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, actually one who was trained in the ninja art in Japan. And he goes, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to rewrite like from the half all the way through. And, but I'm not going to tell the cast. We're going to keep this a secret. So uh, you know, now he's talking in present. So you and I will be the only ones who will know this, uh, how it's going to actually end. And, oh, OK. And, uh, nice. So. Uh, uh, he had uh, Kurt Russell waiting in the waiting room, you know, as maybe the star of this wow. thing. But he wasn't real excited about Kurt Russell. Uh, he wanted Robert De Niro. So I was going <laughs> to. De Niro. Yeah. Well, see, this is like 40 years ago. De Niro was a young guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raging and, Bull. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to live with Robert De Niro for six months and teach him some stuff, you know, wow. so we could do this. And. And I'm thinking this was meant to be. I've been home for a month and a half and blah, 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 this stuff is all gone. Just exactly, well, I don't know what happened, you know, some foul up and uh, then the people were on contract, but their contracts ran out and they had to do other movies and they're renegotiating this stuff and the movie never got made, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and there's so many other movies like that that, uh, it just was not meant to be me and oh, so close that yeah that's frustrating there's a lot of almost i mean that would have been that would have been quite amazing because ninjas were i guess canon films came out with enter the ninja probably in what 79 i, I forget the exact year 80, but 80 80 but so the, the ninja popularity was really growing quite a bit because of canon films and then you know obviously the ninja turtles and other stuff yeah the, but that would have been the time to do it that, well, uh, that would have been a huge movie with with the a-lister and that director and then who better to be the technical advisor right i mean yeah. you lived that life 
<laughs> I mean, well, like, and then there were then there were these like canon movies that were like, okay, let's let's like there's the ninja and there's like this one foreign guy who comes in. I mean, just I'm going. Well, that's my life story. That's what I was gonna say. You that you're the canon movie in real life. <laughs> it's like, hey, that's me. I uh, I wrote the original screenplay for Enter the Ninja for canon. Did you? Yeah. The Canon Group is proud to introduce the practitioner of the oldest and ultimate martial art, the ninja. Mike Mike Stone, the karate champion. Yeah, sure. He was living in LA then when I came back, and he was a great fan of ninja movies as a kid growing up in Hawaii. So he got in touch with me, so I flew out to LA and he got me a job. I'd never done a screenplay. I had no idea, you know? And but he got me the job of writing the screenplay for Enter the Ninja. So he and I would like go over these ideas and I'd flesh this thing out and uh, he was gonna be the star of this movie. And, uh, oh gosh, uh, we ran into creative differences. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and, uh, oh God, so finally they, they ended up firing Mike because he has a very Hawaiian facial structure and somehow on the camera it it just flattens out uh he's a handsome guy he's older than i am but he's a really handsome guy uh but like on camera it just didn't work out and uh, so they ended up uh getting somebody else to play the role and uh uh then they changed things from my original screenplay and I said, you know, I'm just starting to get known as the ninja guy, you know, and if my name is on there and they're doing these goofy things, people are going to just laugh. So, no, you can. so I finally told them, I said, uh, put a different name up for a screenwriter. I, you know, if my teacher sees this, oh gosh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I wouldn't be able to live this down. So, uh, I forget what name they put for the screenplay writer, but I wrote the screenplay. That's crazy. Or That's Enter so the funny. Ninja. Yeah. Wow. And I think it was a great screenplay. It was really great. But, you know, we're going to film in the Philippines and we can't get electricity out to the jungle, you know, for the floodlights at night. So uh, we're going to have the fight scenes during the day. And I said, well, you know, if this is the first introduction people have had to a ninja it's got to be at night and uh he's got why you guys can't fight during the day yeah. <laughs> oh, no no it's, it's like doing a dracula movie on the beach at miami <laughs> <laughs> no no uh you can't do that it's got to be at night in transylvania and uh so i had the bad ninjas in maroon suits because at night maroon just it turns sort of a dark gray a mottled color you can't see it well they switched it to the day and here are these guys and then they got fire engine red suits so here are these ninja <laughs> fire engine red ninja suits in the jungle during the day oh it just got you know went from bad to worse but i did write the uh, and I got paid to write the screenplay for Menachem Golem in uh, Enter the Ninja. Yeah, that, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, movie uh, never worked out. So finally, uh, but I wrote books in the early 80s with uh, Black Belt and uh, another company called Contemporary in Chicago. And I, I was stunned. These things, like, sold like crazy so i did not even have a job for all those years i just lived off the book royalties and <laughs> nice yeah later on somebody explained to me you lived off of book royalties yeah i mean i wasn't a billionaire but you know we did everything we needed to do and he says you know how rare that is uh even uh, no uh yeah so those books just went uh blew the lid off and uh so i was able to support myself while i did all these crazy projects and then uh, uh so we finally found out oh god we're pregnant and uh, <laughs> so i uh got a house out in the woods of ohio and just came back to where i came from and uh uh 
started to teach. I was always teaching in seminars, but I didn't have a school. And other guys could run schools if they wanted to. They would study with me. And uh, I did seminars and the books. Those were the two things that I did. Kind of amazing if you think about it. Uh, going to Japan with nothing, not knowing anybody, getting to learn, but then doing film and like TV and ads and stuff, making a living doing that, coming back to the United States and almost like just ended up in a huge, huge film. And then you ended up doing these books, which was the Ninja Craze period. So perfect timing. But yeah, I mean, things worked out quite well, aside from like the big Hollywood movie. Things worked out really, really well for you. Oh, I am, I, <laughs> I am so blessed, David. I, you know, I look around today, and I live in my dream house, and I am married to my dream girl, and both of my kids turned out fabulous, and I drive my dream cars, and <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm really a blessed guy. Um, it did work out. Uh, life did work out for me very very well and we're free to travel and uh uh and now i have a new saying that uh, since i sold my school a year ago i said i only deal with people i like as you should there's no there's no, there's no point in wasting your time otherwise <laughs> people it's like why, well, why am i wasting no. my time with this guy for example yeah, exactly you know say oh you don't like me mm, goodbye <laughs> i'm out of there <laughs> yeah you know when we're young i guess we have to put up with bad bosses or snarky co-workers or whatever nope none of that anymore uh, <laughs> do you ever get anybody in your interview that you don't like um I had a guy that turned on me, Whoa. but the, the thing about that guy is he is a hater. Like he is so disrespectful. He's the scum of the earth, which I didn't know at the time, though I always knew he was kind of a narcissist, but a hundred times worse than I ever suspected. No kidding. Yeah. 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 And I, I had like befriended him and, you know, kept in contact with him outside of the interviews up until maybe, you know, the beginning of the year. Uh, well, he, he's the guy, by the way, who said, oh, I could beat up Michael J. White with one kick. It's like, <laughs> I thought he was just joking, but I think he's really that delusional where he believes that. It's like, what? Are you kidding? I thought this was a joke. This guy, like, thinks that. So, um, yeah, I call him the most delusional man on the planet. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. But you've had a lot of really interesting people on your show, you know? And, and I think you're a very... You're a very positive guy, you know. I mean, there's some controversial people that have been on your show, and, sure. and you, you, no, you always give them their voice. You don't make judgments, and uh, uh, you know, I mean, that seems to work for you, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that's I'm just being me. Like I'm always like that glass half full kind of guy, anyway. And I'm trying to look for like I like to focus more on the positive, you know, just in general. You know, I've heard. I've heard, you know, controversy sells, controversy sells. And in fact, in the early 80s, like these martial art magazines, you know, before the Internet, uh, I was it. I was the ninja guy, you know. And so some of these editors would like find other people who claim to be ninja and make us enemies. I'm not an enemy with this guy. I don't even know him, you know. Yeah. yeah, well, Hayes did his camp and this guy did his camp and, you know, they're competing and I'm not competing with anybody, you know, I'm just doing my thing. And uh, so controversy sells on one hand. But, you know, I think really with our culture today, with the Internet, with social media, uh, you know, we've really become so polarized. Yeah, big you know? time. It's kind of sad. I think so, too. I think so, too. And I really think that those powers that are earning a whole lot more zeros than I am uh, find it very profitable to keep us arguing and fighting. Oh, I don't like this guy because he's a fraud. And I saw on a YouTube, he did this. <laughs> um, you know, to keep us fighting and we get in that fighting mode. So we're fighting about politics or we're fighting about religion or we're fighting about uh, you know, interracial cultural things and all this kind of stuff that we're we're so used to being conflicting. Now it slops over into the martial arts. And, oh, that guy's a fraud. I could take him with one kid. And, 
you know, um, it was like back in the 70s, I remember people used to say, I challenged Muhammad Ali to a fight and he never even replied. <laughs> you know, like, oh gosh, Muhammad Ali is scared of you. And you know, just some nobody. And, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, so just funny stuff. But I think to keep a positive view, you know, looking for the positives, and uh, we all know the negatives. You don't have to dwell on that stuff. That's my attitude at this point. Uh, just talk about the positive. Hey, what do you do? What are you doing right now to help the world and to aid in your own personal development? That's all I'm interested in talking about. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and, no, I'm not interested in that. And, and that's how I see the martial arts. Like, yes, a lot of us got into it initially because it's like self-defense and we could defend ourselves. And, you know, that's why I got into it because there were bullies and much bigger kids. And I'm like, I'm a sitting duck over here in middle school, man. I, I better start lifting weights to do a martial arts. I'm literally a sitting duck. So anyway, but people who um, stick with it, I'm a lifetime martial artist too. So, you know, once I started in, in the mid nineties, I never stopped, but it's all about like personal development and, and getting better and being a better person. It's not about like, Oh, I could beat that guy up. It's like, no, it's not about that, man. It's, I mean, yes, I will protect myself. If I get mugged in an alley, I will do whatever I can, but that's not what it's about. It's about becoming a better person and trying not to fight if you don't have to. Jordan Peterson has a really interesting way of looking at this. He said, people think that you should be weak and you should be docile and then you, you, you should be a pacifist. He goes, no, you should be a monster and then learn how to control it. Because it doesn't mean that you can't be kind if you're strong, but it does mean you can't be strong if you're weak. You know, I think that's so true, isn't it? I mean, really, uh, sure, when we first start out, we, well, got to learn how to punch. We got to <laughs> learn how to uh, unbalance and throw somebody. And that's what we concentrate on because that's what I'm lacking at that point. Uh, then later on, you know, hey, I can handle myself pretty well against maybe average guy. And uh, I'm still trying to get better at my martial art. Uh, our martial art emphasizes uh, the older you are and the longer you've been at it, the less effort you use. We can unbalance a person a little bit and as he struggles to get back into control, that's how you can do a throw. Mm -hmm. And whereas there are other martial arts where, no, I throw him to unbalance him. That'd be a much more, you know, athletic. Yeah, it's a younger um, man's game. <laughs> younger man's game. Strong, stronger man's game. And uh, uh, no, ours is weird. I always tease the students. I say, well, this ninjutsu, everything is backwards. Just <laughs> everything's backwards. And uh, uh, But you do get to a point where you look at, say, this personal development. Who are you as a person? You know, you've taken on this persona of uh, this, 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 part of which is martial arts. What do you stand for? Um, you know, you're in a parking lot and some idiot zips in and parks where you were going to park. Oh, I'm going to get in a big fight with this. God, you know, the poor idiot, he thinks he won. Uh, hey, if your life is that screwed up, pal, uh, I, I don't want to give you any more grief. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, if I'm in an alleyway and somebody's going to threaten my kid or uh, me, no, nah, I mean, that's a different story. But there's so many situations that we face where <clears throat> if you just have a view of being like above, like a protector, a protector. So you're going to protect the guy who wants to fight you? Yeah, you know, if I can. Uh, how are you going to do that? I just say, oh, man, you're too tough for me, pal. I'm going to take <laughs> off. God. Well, he thinks he won. Yeah, let give, give the poor guy a break. He had such a miserable, crappy life. You know? uh, uh, yeah, but, I mean, shouldn't you, like, teach him a lesson? Or now, If I gave free private lessons to everybody who wanted one, I'd be too busy. Uh, no, I don't. I'm looking for the people who like me. I'm looking for the people that I like. Uh, that's my life now. I want to spend minimal time with poor, broken down, huff and puff, uh, shattered life kind of characters that 
again, I'm not talking about real self-defense where, no, I'm cornered and I've got to fight my way out of here. That's different. But uh, just in everyday life, you know, how can I be a little more pleasant, you know, a little smile. Going back to movies, because somebody wanted me to ask you, uh, experiences and involvement in a film called Ninja Vengeance. <laughs> do you remember that one? That <laughs> sounds like you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my one ninja movie. <laughs> oh, I had some friends who were coming to my seminars and they made this like low budget uh, ninja movie. And I, I, I actually played myself in this movie. Okay. So the hero has a flashback to where he's like a seminar on Galveston Beach and I'm teaching it and I give him his black belt and tell him some things that he needs to remember and then he goes off and has this crazy adventure and uh, you know with the Ku Klux Klan and all kinds of stuff like that and uh, yeah so I, I played myself in the opening of this uh, Ninja Vengeance movie it's still available on VHS you can still see it on eBay or whatever and uh, you know, there's my one movie <laughs> yeah, did you have fun making it or was it one of those oh yeah it was fun it was fun oh, you, you had fun making it at least yeah because I knew all the people and uh um you know so I think we did my whole part in a day you know yeah and it must have been an easy role since you just played yourself so it's like <laughs> <laughs> there you go let me ask you this Stephen so with the Hatsumi guy and I guess you were associated with Bujikan like you you branched out though um Toshindo right that's right like yeah. why was there a specific reason where you said I kind of got to go my own way <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>